All right, welcome to the Church of Corone. Oh, so good to have you back with me for 15 minutes. Thanks for hitting play. And uh, so today, uh, oh, by the way, I just want to say that was called the Philadelphia Experiment, and that's a great CD. It was uh, produced in 2001, and unfortunately, they haven't made any uh, others, but uh, you can listen to that online, the whole album. Uh, all right, so we are going to First, just douse ourselves with some white angelica. All right, <laughs> we need to douse ourselves with a lot of this because this helps prevent negativity. Oh, woo! Kind of arms us with protection, <laughs> balances us, and you want to put it on your neck, your ears, oh, your wrists, your nose, just to inhale. <laughs> Lots of protection. <laughs> All right. So uh, I learned that from my missus today. And thank you, Ron and Bev. <sighs> All right. So massages are very excellent, too. If any of you are going through health issues, you want to do that if all possible. But uh, anyway, we, whew, we just need lots of <laughs> good vibes going on here. Oh. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk to you about this juice. This is a wonderful juice that uh, I've concocted here because of its benefits. Its benefits of apple. So if you have an apple and you want to blend your apple, please do so. Or if you're rushed and you just want to use the organic uh, honey crisp, so I use uh, organic apple juice, great. This is a great hot or cold drink to start your day, midday, and end your day with. And uh, we want to get fresh turmeric, best, right? Best is fresh. And then um, the ginger. Look at these beautiful colors. <laughs> so we want to also get these amazing, if you don't have it, microplane. Uh, and these are great graters for the ginger and the turmeric. And ginger is amazing. It's amazing how it fits for, um, you can see that ginger there. And you want to do it as much as you you, you can handle, right? Um, some people are a little more sensitive than others. So it's kind of really a taste thing of how much you want in there. And then the uh, turmeric, okay? You want to pop that in there. And then we want a tablespoon of the apple cider vinegar. If you don't know about this, you really want to use this stuff because this is amazing health-wise. All right, so turmeric and ginger, Google those, and cayenne. Oops, forgot about that. We want to put some cayenne in there, too. These are crazy in their benefits. All right, and then we're just going to take a uh, paper straw. Oh, yes. <sighs> Darling. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> hmm. Ah. So refreshing, so healthy. Turmeric, ginger, cayenne, it, it, it's helpful with pain, boosts your brain power. My mom, sadly, um, had Alzheimer's and dementia for eight years, and um, it was terrible. So it's something that uh, is really good. I didn't know about this at the time, but, you know, it, it, uh, it would have been extremely beneficial for her to have. And we want to do these things as prevention now. So we don't go get these and then, you know, start doing prevention. Uh, we want to do the prevention before we get uh, diseases. Uh, these are also uh, great for osteoporosis, for brain health. I think I mentioned that for bone density. Uh, just Google them. They're amazing benefits. And again, for me, this is God's love, right? For me, I look at this because on the outside, they look very similar in color, although the turmeric is a little bit different, but the ginger, uh, and they almost look like uh, little corals, right? Uh, but the, the beauty is these two distinct colors inside that God's palette is beautiful. And uh, then all of these miraculous medicinal, you know, compounds that are inside cayenne, the apple, 
and the turmeric and the ginger. And of course, curry comes from turmeric. And the Indians, of course, have used this. Uh, and uh, it's been very medicinal through uh, uh, many centuries. And so, and ginger as well. Uh, cayenne too. And the apples, okay? But uh, so for me, if you are an evolutionist, if you could just explain how on their own, the ginger and the turmeric, right, decided I'll be yellow, I'll be orange. And then all of these medicinal benefits that don't help them, right? These are just roots, but do help us. So for me, that's why I say this is, because I'm an artist, I see this as extremely artistic and then very beneficial and loving for my health and yours. So even if you are, are an atheist, still please drink this drink, right? But if you are an atheist and believe in evolution, if you could please explain to me how the turmeric, the ginger, the cayenne, the apple, thought of all of these benefits for us in their colors, their distinct flavors, how they did that. Because you basically have to think of miracles either way, right? The miracle of evolution, being able to do this as a root, or the miracle of the Magnus Opus creator. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so there is a an exhibit called London 1938 Defending Degenerate German Art that is now uh, on exhibit at Max Lieberman's Villa in Germany. And if you are there, please go check it out because basically this is an exhibit about an exhibit, about another exhibit. <laughs> because the Rape of Europa, if you watch that, it's an incredible documentary and it really shows the uh, obsession and insanity of Hitler and why he was going, the routes he was taking basically to steal art uh, is what he was doing. And so because he didn't get accepted into the Vienna Art Academy, dear God, whew, I wish they had accepted him. Uh, we had, you know, this horrific time in history. Uh, anyway, so Hitler had taken 650 artists, which he deemed degenerate, and had an exhibit, basically was hanging their art skewed on the walls, spray paint, you know, it was a very shaming exhibit. Uh, letting everybody know that these 650 artists were not to be hanging in museums or galleries. You were not to be buying their art. They were being banned from teaching and uh, many went into exile. So it was a terrible time for artists. Uh, so this show in Germany right now is based on the London show that happened a year later that Picasso went to, Virginia Woolf and uh, many other well-known figures that was supporting the degenerate artists. So a year after Hitler's, uh, London had this exhibit and uh, Martha Lieberman, who was married to Max Lieberman, who donated one of the pieces to the London 1938 exhibit, she, uh, because she was Jewish, she actually chose to commit suicide uh, instead of going to a camp. So uh, the lots of history, and if you are in the area of Germany, please go check that exhibit out. It's going to be up to uh, through January 2019. All right, so the piece behind me was inspired by the documentary, The Rape of Europa, and then the degenerate art uh concept that Hitler had come up with. And it really made me think uh, about the fact that uh, I would have been considered, along with many of my friends, a degenerate artist um, under Hitler's rule. And so I created this exhibit. Uh, this was in 2009. So if you go to one of my older websites, uh, it's coronegran.com, you can check out Solo Show 2009 and see the rest of the other pieces that were in this show. But this is called Queen of the Arts. Mona Lisa obviously is at the top. And then Anne Frank, she had gone into hiding and then was murdered in the camps. And then the anonymous black German girl who represents the black children that Hitler deemed uh, unworthy of having children. So he sterilized them. And a lot of people don't know about that. But for me, this piece was really contemplating the value of art versus human life. Because as we know, the Mona Lisa was whisked off to her own villa and she was preserved and saved and taken very well care of. And uh, 75,000, um, excuse me, French uh, Jews were sent to the camps, but she was taken out of the Louvre and preserved. So she's considered priceless. 
but many did not consider uh, the thousands that perished that were French priceless. So that's interesting to me as an artist just to mull over that aspect as an artist of human life versus the value of art. Now, it's really funny, um, <laughs> speaking of the value of art, Banksy, who is a British uh, graffiti artist, and now he's become you know, a fine artist, uh, his uh, identity is actually still unknown, but there was an auction that just happened, and <laughs> his piece, Girl with a Balloon, uh, as soon as the gavel hit, going, going, gone, the piece actually dropped through the frame and was shredded. <laughs> now that just makes me levitate. Artists typically do not get any benefits of auction prices. So uh, Banksy wouldn't have seen any of the million plus that that piece sold for. Uh, so you know, for him, he obviously had to be behind this. Uh, how that all happened, I don't know. But wow, that was a first in American uh, history in the arts and the auction. And I just want to give a shout out to Banksy for doing that. <laughs> ah! Woo -hoo -hoo! All right. Um, Jenny Seville, she actually is the uh, uh, an amazing Scottish artist. Her nudes are phenomenal. And she had one of them called Prop. Uh, that sold for nine million at the same auction. Uh, sort of Banksy's <laughs> stunt overshadowed Ginny Seville, but I want to give a shout out to Ginny Seville because her work is phenomenal and uh, well deserved. But her piece sold for nine million. Of course, she will not see that nine million either. But it does boost her sales and it puts her now as the uh, uh, the highest piece of a living female artist. Um, to be auctioned off. So woohoo to Judy Seville. Uh, all right, so I went to the Royal in uh, Santa Monica, the Royal Lamley Theater, because I wanted to check out uh, Juliet Naked. Now, FYI, spoiler alert, there are no nude scenes. Hmm. <laughs> so, so if you were expecting that, uh, there are none. But Ethan Hawke, who I've mentioned before, uh, he is the uh, uh, main character who is a musician who comes out of hiding after 25 years. Uh, there is an obsessed fan of his who's a professor and a blogger and he fits into this story as well as his girlfriend. So it's an interesting, clever film. It brings up issues of, uh, I think, when we worship people from afar, put people on pedestals, uh, what happens when we intersect with them. Um, also, family, children, how they fit into our lifestyle. And so I'm smiling through a lot of this. It was very charming, clever, witty film. It is definitely a date film. <laughs> so uh, definitely it, take a date to this film. And uh, you will definitely enjoy it. It's very charming. Was this a film that I felt like I was levitating off my seat? And by the way, the seats are far better at the Lamley Royal in Santa Monica than they are at the Clam Claremont Lamley. Um, but they aren't as, as good as these new seats that, that are at these uh, typical cinemas. But hey, I'm not complaining because the Lamley is the one that brings all of these great films typically to their uh, movie theaters. All right, so uh, anyway, I, I will give this film a thumbs up and five fingers just because I, I wasn't levitating. I can't do all 10, right? But but it's, it's, it's a quirky, fun film, so go check it out. Uh, speaking of dates, uh, another amazing God food, and of course, God's humor, God's love, God's humor. These look like little poops. <laughs> and of course, dates are amazing. They have a lot of fiber, right? So they'll keep you regular. So again, God's sense of humor. And uh, they are so moist and chewy. My daughter makes these amazing brownies with nuts and dates and cocoa powder. And ah, mmm, mmm. They taste like a, a thick caramel, right? Three dates a day. Google that and you'll find out the health benefits. Um, as many as amazing dates, what um, other benefits that they have. I really want to incorporate those. Anyway, 
I love you. Please remember to love your neighbor as yourself and you have to love yourself 